So in the previous section, we went ahead and learned a little bit more about SAML. We learned how we can define elements. We learned to use the stack layout, which is a container. And we even went ahead and created an event handler for the clicked event of the button. Precisely when we created this event handler, we were navigated over to the C-sharp file corresponding to this page, which is the main page .saml.cs file, to select where we wanted this event handler to be created. After we selected that, and Windows might have been a little bit different, we saw this method being created. So during this section, what we're going to do is focus on the C Sharp part of our application. We are going to be doing a bit of work with SAML, but we're going to be focusing on making some changes to the application and its functionality. So we have it pretty much ready in the way it's going to look like and how it is going to navigate from one page to another. So the first thing that I want to show you is that this event handler could have been created from C Sharp. And this starts over in the SAML file by us naming the button. As soon as we name our elements, we are going to be able to access them from the C Sharp file. This means that since our button already has a name, we could go ahead, let's say here in the constructor and write save button and notice that it is right there. We can find it right there in the list because Visual Studio is going to help us do that and now start working with it. Now, just like on SAML, we were able to access the clicked event by writing one of the attributes for the button. On C Sharp, we can write a dot and search for the exact same event. In fact, you see a list of all of the events, all of the properties and all of the methods that are precisely right here inside of the button. As we progress through the course, we're going to take a look at some of these properties for some of the elements. In the button, most of the time, you're going to just want to work with a clicked event. Now on C Sharp, creating an event handler is a little bit different. Here, what you have to do is write a space plus equal space again. And notice that Visual Studio is again going to help us create this event handler, but slightly different to what it did with SAML. First, it actually lists a bit more options for us to create this event handler. The first one is to create a new method, which is exactly what we did with SAML. But with C Sharp, we have a few more options. We can create a Lambda expression or an async Lambda expression, even an async delegate. Now we are not going to be focusing on what each and every one of these things are, or even what Lambda or async or delegate means, Let's just for now focus on the fact that you can create a method. And notice that the rest is going to be exactly the same. You will have to select where that method is going to be located and this is going to be created. So here is how you create that event handler here in C Sharp. I do recommend that as long as you can do so, you stick to creating these event handlers from SAML. So that is what we are going to be living in here. I just wanted to mention that you can do this on C Sharp as well. Now, let me also mention something very important in here. You may be wondering how is it that just by writing a name on an element here on SAML magically, they are available right here on the C Sharp file. And in fact, if you notice, they are available as fields for this particular class. That means that they are somehow defined inside of this same class. So is there just some magic happening that allows SAML to suddenly create variables or fields inside of the C file? 
Well, yes, but it's not as magical as you may think. There is some automation going on, but there's definitely an explanation. So what I want you to do is go ahead and select your contacts project. Not the solution, by the way, the project, the one that is the shared one. Right click and select reveal in Finder so we can take a look at the entire project. Now in here, you're going to find some files that are not listed in Visual Studio. They are hidden. Now, by the way, to do the same thing on Windows, you could just navigate over to your file explorer and find your project. Typically, it is going to be on Documents, Visual Studio 2017 and Projects. Mine is not here, but this is typically where you will have it. Mine is already on my repos folder. However, if you're on Windows, there is a faster way. Right from Visual Studio, you can select your contacts project from the Solution Explorer and find this icon that is called Show All Files. If you select it, you are going to find here those files that are not displayed by default, including the OBG folder that we're about to talk about. So let's jump back over to my Mac because from here on out, it's just the same thing. The only difference is how you jump over to these files, but notice that in here you have, for example, the bin folder that is not listed, the obg folder that is not listed, the others are simply the app.saml and the main page.saml and main page.saml.cs that we do have access to. Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and open the obg folder. In here, open the debug folder and the net standard 2.0 folder. Notice that here there are some files that are complementary to the app class and to the main page class. So there is actually a main page.saml.g.cs file in here. And the same for the app class, but I want you to focus on this main page class or C chart file. This is actually defining a little bit more about the same main page class that we have been working with. Let me actually go ahead and open this with Visual Studio. And actually, let me just go ahead and use any tool that I have here to take a look at it. This notice is also defining the main page class. And I will talk a little bit more about this in just a second, but notice that it is in here where the save button is being defined. So it turns out that as we add names to the elements inside of our SAML file, automatically Xamarin is generating these fields. This save button was added automatically without us having to do anything as soon as we set the name over in the SAML file. These is how we are able to go ahead and from the main page.saml.cs file use this save button. So a little bit more about the explanation. Notice that this class, the main page, is a partial class. The fact that this class is defined as partial is the thing that enables us or through C sharp enables the compiler to define one class in many different files. And the same thing would happen, by the way, with methods. We could define partial methods that are defined in many different places. Right now, Xamarin is using this feature of C to be able to define one part of the main page in here, hidden from the user, and the other one, let me just navigate over here, here just in the main page.saml.cs. As you can see, it is marked partial here as well. So that is why by having two files for the main page class, we can have this save button definition kind of hidden, but being able to use it without any problem from the main page.saml.cs. So hopefully you now understand a bit better about what kind of magic was going on in here. The main thing that I want to mention is that 
Now you should understand that if we want to access the properties for these entries, let's say that the text that the user wrote down, so eventually we save the contact, we would need to add their names. We don't need to name these entries yet, but we will have to do so eventually. For now, in the next lecture, we're going to be working on changing what the first page is going to be by creating a new page inside of our project.